And thank you for staying up late with us here on The Factor Uncensored. We have a great show planned for you. We appreciate your attention tonight. Well, it's hard to try to wrap your head around this. A Florida deputy thought a falling acorn, an acorn that hit his patrol car, was a suspect already handcuffed in his vehicle shooting at him. Believe it or not, this happened back in November. But the video of the incident involving the deputy from Okaloosa County, Florida, Sheriff's Office is just released to the public. Deputy Jesse Hernandez was detaining a man accused of sending threatening text messages. He had just cuffed the man and put him in the back of the patrol car when this happened. Wow. During the panic, Hernandez's partner, who didn't hear anything like a gunshot, seemed confused and started shooting too. Hernandez has since resigned from the force and will not be charged. His partner was cleared likely because Hernandez set off that panic with his claims of being shot. We talked with retired assistant HPD chief Jimmy Dodson to get this take on this bizarre shooting. Your thoughts about what we see in this video out of Florida from Deputy Jesse Hernandez, who has since resigned from the force? Well, it has a lot to do with training. And uh, I don't know if his was a lack of training or not. But when you are in a situation like that, you have to make sure that you observe everything uh, before you pull that trigger uh, in order to put somebody else in harm's way and again i i i don't want to put myself in his shoes because i wasn't there but common sense would tell you that the first thing you want to do is do a quick scan of the area uh to make sure that first of all if you didn't see any bullet fragments uh, on the car uh just because there was a sound uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a, a gunshot. It can sound like a gunshot. There's fireworks that sound like gunshots. Mm -hmm. So it could have something to do with his training or lack of training, that is. Again, it could have something to do with his persona. Don't know what area of town this took place in. But as you know, uh, officers today are on high alert all the time, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. But it still doesn't negate the fact that you have to make sure that you observe before you pull that trigger. Now, if he would have seen someone that looked like they had a gun, that may be justifiable. But in this situation, it's hard to explain his actions. And it's my understanding uh, he thought the suspect in the car who was already in the vehicle, handcuffed, 22-year-old Marquise Jackson, had apparently fired from the car, but he was in the car. He was already pat down, already searched. And because the girlfriend said he may have more than one weapon, it's my understanding he was going back to the vehicle, that being Deputy Hernandez, to search him again when he heard the acorn sound. And that sent him on a down, downward spiral. I mean, it was just incredible watching him. Did it seem like fear? What did it seem like to you uh, we saw with Deputy Hernandez, Chief? Well, again, Isaiah, it, it, it certainly appears to be a, a lot of overreaction that took place. But again, um, I don't know what action had transpired prior to him firing his weapon. And then when he did fire his weapon, it appears that there was an excessive amount of rounds that uh, he fired. He uh, Yeah, yeah. And, and so, again, it goes back to your training. Usually you train to fire a volley of rounds and then observe. Uh, and then if you see that your target is still there and it hasn't been neutralized, then you fire the next volley of rounds. But you just don't open your clip. Uh, without first observing your target for if it's and possible. if you look at the body camera footage 
chief and you see the vehicle he's shooting at where the suspect is already handcuffed in that vehicle but just to the left of that is a federal deputy a fellow deputy standing there but he's shooting right at that vehicle is that a dangerous situation very dangerous very dangerous again it calls that factor of make sure that you observe you have to keep your head on a swivel make sure that you are watching everything that you possibly can within that 306 degree radius and if he had observed carefully he would have seen the deputy standing there and that would have told him oh man i need to cease fire before i really hit some innocent individual here or hit another officer and, and that's another good point you make. You were in, you were in a residential area, a neighborhood, and it's my yep. understanding it was uh, something to the effect of nine in the morning. People could be going to work, or uh, children tend to go to school a little bit earlier than that. But I mean, you're in a neighborhood, and you're just unloading your clip. I mean, it's mind-boggling to see that. Again, it, it has a lot. A great deal, I should say. I shouldn't say a lot, but it, I'm sure it's going to reflect on his training or lack of training, or he may not just have the right stuff cut out to be a law enforcement officer. Even though we, we try to do the best we can in screening people and put them through all the psychological evaluations, but it's a different thing when you put that uniform and that badge on. And as I, as I stated earlier, given the environment that we're in today, with mass shootings and law enforcement being a target, um, I, I, it certainly can, uh, it's understandable that he may have probably gotten spooked, but the fact that he fired that many rounds, that is not explainable at all. That's unexplainable when you fire that many rounds. But again, you're trained to fire a volley of rounds until your target is neutralized, but you also want to make sure that your target is still the target that you think is there before you continue to fire. And I think you hit the nail on the head for many of us laymen, average citizens who saw that. He was spooked. Yes. He was scared to death. He was frightened and lost focus. Yes. That's what again, we saw as viewers. Right. And again, you have to understand that as I mentioned earlier, uh, every person that put that uniform on is not cut out to go through the rigorous activities that you have to go through to be successful as a law enforcement officer. And we all who put that uniform on know that without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to be put in the situations to where you got to use some courage. But more importantly, you got to use some common sense as well. Yeah, because you guys put your lives on the line for the community. And uh, you just can't go out there, as you said, spooked. Exactly. <laughs> Chief Dodson, we want to thank you for your time. And it is always good to see you here on the Factor Uncensored. And we appreciate your law enforcement expertise.